In a previous video, uh, in fact, I think the last video, uh, Jeff Poole left a comment uh, wondering about cross-compilation. Uh, and I really like that. Thank you for the suggestion, because that's going to be a great way to get software onto the Spark Station 10. Building anything relatively modern on such an old CPU will take a while. And to be honest, I have not built GCC for a cross-compilation in a long time. So we'll go through it now. If I make any mistakes, don't hold it against me may just add a few extra minutes to the video. Um, so let's get started. Uh, two things I did before this video was I downloaded uh, Binutils and GCC. I did check the docs to find out what the latest version of GCC would work here. So uh, I was hoping to do a Series 5. They don't support it. Uh, in fact, the last this is the last version with support, 4.6.4. Uh, in uh, 4.7, they've deprecated the target. Um, the other thing I did was I mounted uh, root and user from the Sunblade 1000 over here to uh, you know my my uh, Slackware machine. That's because we're going to need the libraries and the include files, uh, and it'll also make a nice mechanism. Right now, it's mounted read only, uh, just for safety. I don't know. Um, if nothing else, but if I turn that on to read write, I can build and then install over the over NFS, and then have those libraries and header files ready for the next uh, piece of software that depends on it. So uh, a few things we need. So our target is going to be Spark dash Sun dash Solaris 2.8. So we'll set that in an environment variable, so that we'll have it easy uh, and available later. And we also need a, an environment variable. We don't need an environment, but we could put it in, but this will make it easier to refer back to our root here. So where we put our other stuff. And GCC seems to like it called sysroot. And we'll go install this into a directory. Um, let's make called SparkX for cross-compiler. Let's make that directory. Okay, so we are pretty much ready to begin. First thing, let me extract the uh, packages here. And one of the things, the good practice, and I'm guilty of not doing this all the time, is just building inside the package directory, but you really should create a build directory. And having just read the GCC docs, they recommend that. So we'll build bin utils first. And we'll set the target. And the prefix. And set our sysroot so we can find libraries and everything else. And run our configure. And let's do a make. And we'll give it, uh, let's give it seven threads just for uh, just for speed here and this should churn along pretty easily or pretty quickly I should say and hopefully this doesn't fail out for some unknown reason um, so cross compilations a, a pretty useful technique um, like I say I haven't really used it when I have a retro machine I just let it churn away and uh, and run um, to go build stuff, but again, I really appreciate this comment and this suggestion because for the Spark Station, this will really make it easy to um, uh, to get software up on on it very quickly. Let me just say make all, make sure that's all, and let's do a make install. And so we now have all the bin utils. So, you know, object dump, copy, strip, 
the assembler, things like that, LD, all the necessary stuff. So now on to building GCC. And this should be pretty much the same thing. I'm surprised that actually worked first time. So it means the documentation's pretty good, which one of the things the GNU project has is some of the their kind of big projects, things like GCC, um, have excellent documentation. Same thing with the Apache people. They're HTTP, they're big web servers, they're big projects. Their lesser projects, the documentation isn't necessarily as good, although in most cases it's more than adequate. Um, one of those differences with the the BSD is obviously they don't have as much as much span, um, but just for some of the command line utilities, look at the GNU docs versus the BSD docs. Eh, sometimes the BSD man page can be uh, slightly more informative, but again, GNU today, 2016, about about said 2015, is pretty good. Is pretty good. So I'm bringing up some stuff from way back when. <sighs> So let me quit yapping and get on to the. See, so I almost did a, a dot configure. And this is why we set the uh, the target and everything earlier. And we'll set that we want to use uh, the GNU bin utils here. And I love tab completion in the shell, so you don't have to tell, type everything, which really is nice. And I saw some notes that um, libgcj takes a while to build, and I don't need it for anything, so I'll disable that. But we do want to enable some languages here, which would be... C, C++, and we'll give it Fortran. No, 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 that was a joke. Um, so let's see if that that does its thing. Seems to. So next step is a make. Again, we'll give it uh, seven make jobs. Um, making in parallel is a really nice thing, and should be no problems with well-formed make files and well-formed projects and you can see how it really cuts down on the build time this machine has eight cores um, you know how do you optimize that uh, some people say do one one make stream more than you have cores to allow for IO weight I like one less in case we're doing anything else um, you know matter of preference uh, do whatever load um, it works well, and depending on how your system's I/O and you know uh, optimize per per system, um, I find one make operation less than the number of threads available to one more somewhere in that range uh, versus the number of processors or processor cores you have available. Of course, on here uh, this FX eighty three fifty, it's not you know they're not full cores, right? So they share some. Uh, again, just like on Intel with the hyperthreading, it's a shared sum you know, with the hyperthreads. They're not full cores, so bear that in mind. And this seems to be to be moving along pretty well. So hopefully it won't take too long. And again, as, as I said, I appreciate the comment. Please leave comments. Um, it, it's good to find out what uh, what everyone thinks. And um, you know, I'll, this was an excellent idea. Uh, so this will really come in handy building up the Spark Station 10, um, which I've got to get uh, Solaris 2.8 on there. Um, and I don't know. Any interest in seeing NIS or NIS Plus? Um, probably not, because those are uh, not uh, not terribly pertinent technologies anymore. Um, you know, might as well look at Active Directory.
which is annoying enough as it is. So this is really trucking along. Um, lots of little bits and pieces to build here. Anyone have any experience with uh, with Clang uh, compiler set? I know some of the BSDs have gone that direction. Um, you know, I'm finicky about my C compilers. I like I like GCC and GCC five, which is one of the reasons I'm excited about Slackware fourteen two. Um, GCC five, you could put it elsewhere, but um, a GCC5 has some nice features for optimizations and they claim it can beat Intel's compiler on modern uh, CPUs. Hey, we're done. So let's do a make all, just make sure we're... Yep. And we're installing. So we now have a cross compiler um, for Spark. Well, when the install is done. Here we go. We got uh, GCC. We got C++. We have Fortran. So exactly what we're looking for. Let's just create a little test. <laughs> oh, Pearl gets in your brain. And just leave ourselves a little note. And let's see if this works. Okay, well that is pretty cool. So we've generated um, now a Spark binary on here. This is 32 bit, so Spark V8, V8 plus. So it may not work on some of the older. Uh, spark stuff, but let's do this. Let's do a so if we can generate a 64 bit binary, and there we've got the Spark V9 or 64 bit. Why am I using that? Let's drop these out on the Sunblade. And we will head over there and see what uh, whether they work. Yeah, fat fingered. And there you go. Uh, let's see if the test 64 works. So we can now build software on X64 and execute it on the Spark. Um, Solaris. Uh, again, the, the couple things to look out for um, is that the GCC version, um, they're going to drop these old platforms, right? So Solaris 8 was dropped by GCC 4.7, so you may need an older version. Um, and that's pretty much it. You saw how painless it was. Um, one of the things I'm going to uh, maybe tackle in another video is seeing about doing cross compilation for um, uh, another system. Um, maybe something like a 6502 where you, you really get the advantage of 
doing cross compilation. And I don't think GCC can do 6502. I don't know. Let me know. Um, hope this was informative and enjoyable. Thanks.